Greetings and welcome once again to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. So in a previous video, I started the first part of a series on Rudin's bullshit of unreal analysis. And in that section, I gave you some homework to do, uh, setting you up to be able to question what comes next after this first part that I introduced. Okay, so you were supposed to study these two articles and learn where number comes from, how we realize it <clears throat> from nothing in a systematic and valid way, and also how to do arithmetic without numbers because the first kind of arithmetic we did didn't come from numbers. Okay, it came before numbers. So, and of course the arithmetic that you have with numbers comes directly from this arithmetic. So in part two, we'll continue with uh, Rudin's definitions. So he begins to talk now about the structure. So he says, uh, the purpose of the above discussion has been to show that the rational number system has certain gaps. <laughs> um, and then in spite of the fact that between any two rationals, there is another, the real number system fills these gaps. So he's made a lot of bullshit claims and of course, he's about to set out now to demonstrate why these claims are so. And of course, still remember that he, he hasn't actually shown anything about the rational number system. He hasn't defined it. Uh, now, why hasn't he done that? Because um, <laughs> he hasn't said what is the definition of a rational number. If he said, all he said, it's a, it's a number that can be represented as P over Q, but that's that that is circular because p and q are rational numbers so basically what the fantastic and absolute moron is telling you is that a rational number is a fraction of rational numbers okay so he hasn't told you anything about what a rational number is okay so you're introduced now to the concept of set without pre without any previous definition as scatterbrained as the book is there is a back and forth throughout the whole book between sets and numbers. There's no indication of the relationship, not that any exists, but it's kind of taken for granted that you're going to go back and forth. You're going to be talking about sets, numbers, elements, numbers. Um, it's a whole mishmash of garbage. And you'll see now how this all comes into play because it's priming you to believe that this is mathematics, okay? It's not mathematics. It's basically just a set of rules. And mathematics is not a set of rules, by the way. Mathematics is the abstract science of measure and number. So zero is, a, the next thing he says here is, he states some basic uh, concepts from set theory. And of course, it's assumed that one knows set theory by this time, because I mean, you know, you've passed your undergraduate math course. So you've got a bit of set here behind you. But what he doesn't mention here when he's going through the definitions is that zero is a subset of every set, but it can also be an element. And of course, he doesn't include this this year because it's omitted so as not to confuse you. Okay. And of course, he says through cha throughout chapter one, the set of all rational numbers will be denoted by Q. Well, <laughs> There's a saying in Greek, masfotisis, which is actually sarcastic. And it means you've blessed us. In other words, you've told us absolute shit. Okay. Don't give a damn. You can, you, you can denote it by anything you like. We still don't know what rational numbers are. We don't even know what set is. Okay. We don't know what set is. It hasn't been defined. So what's given is circular because, as I said, the integers are rational numbers. And so, as you can see so far, we have a shitload of rules that have nothing to do with mathematics whatsoever. And then we come on to the next definition, an ordered set. So, the definition says, let S be a set, and an order on S is a relation. What the fuck is a relation? You're not told what that is. But you're about to learn now suddenly what a relation is as well. And it's denoted by this less than sign. Okay? So... Um, and it has the following two properties. These are rules. It's saying that if X and Y are elements of S, then only one of the following are true. 
No, of course. <laughs> you cannot do this comparison if you don't have numbers. Okay. Doesn't matter. You can jump up and down. You cannot do this. Because what if you have cat, dog, and bird? And it has an ordering on it. Let's say it has an ordering according to uh, felines, canines, and birds. <laughs> Look, one is not less than the other, and one is not bigger than the other, and one is certainly not equal to the other. So it's not true that uh, one and only one of the statements can be possible because none of these statements are possible in such a set and yet it's ordered okay so and it's and it's ordered according to this uh, uh, to this less than sign because that's the ordering you've made it's a rule basically it, it, there's no other way to interpret this if you throw numbers out there's nothing you can say about an ordered set okay doesn't matter what they tell you what, what your moronic professors of real analysis tell you is absolute garbage. This Typically, this is smoke, this is smoke and mir mirrors, and it's intentional. It primes you to care nothing about the elements of a set so that <laughs> the nefarious theorems can be stated generically, taking the spotlight off numbers. See, again, I mean, we have uh, algebra symbols for elements. But these elements can only be numbers, okay? They can't be anything else. Yes, you know, your lecturer might tell you you can put an ordering on non-number set, but that's absolute bullshit, okay? Because less than doesn't have, less than greater than doesn't have any connection to sets that don't have numbers. So the statement X is less than Y may be read as X is less than Y or X is smaller than Y or X precedes Y. See, so this X precedes Y is an attempt to make you comfortable with the fact that this doesn't have to mean less than as it does in, as it does mean in numbers okay so when sets contain no numbers ordering is a rule it's not a property of numbers and that's what this idiot is trying to explain to you he's trying to get to the point where uh, you understand what is a real number but of course, he hasn't even defined what, what a number is, not even a rational number. So that's what these sick bastards want you to imbibe. Okay. And this is typically what happens at the beginning of a course in real, so called real analysis. Okay. So the next definition says that an ordered set is a set S in which an order is defined. Well, that's. This this is kind of funny because it's it's the same as this definition because an order can be defined, okay, like I mentioned earlier with cat, dog, and bird. And then it says, for example, Q is an ordered set if R is less than S, and you, you can't have less than um, unless it's numbers or you apply a particular rule. And then that's defined to mean that S minus R is a positive rational number. So how do you get S minus R is a positive rational number if you've got cat, bird, and dog? Okay, so again, here we have the back and forth. It's de going from elements, sets, to numbers. It's all scatterbrained. So if there are no numbers, then S minus R is meaningless and certainly not a positive rational number. <laughs> I mean, it's stating a positive rational Well. We don't know if it's a positive rational number because we don't even know what a rational number is, okay? And so this baboon, Rudin, goes into the next definition where it starts to define uh, whether a set is bounded above or below. Now, this, by the way, can only apply to numbers. It can't apply to anything else. I don't care what, what your lecturer tells you. He's wrong, okay? And so, basically, if you have a set S and it's ordered, <laughs> it is ordered if it contains numbers. And and beta is a set of is an element of S, and X is less than or equal to beta. Um, for every X is an element of E, we say that E is bounded above. And so then he continues in the next definition to define. Uh, two concepts which are pretty 
common in set theory, the least upper bound, which is called the supremum, and the greatest low, lower bound, which is called the infimum of E. And so he continues then with some more theorems and definitions, and then we get to the point where he begins to define fields. And so uh, this is really another topic on its own. So I'll stop here and I'll probably cover this in part three of the video series. If you're not a rare subscriber to my channel, become a subscriber. Click like on my video and uh, join my members only to get special perks. Okay. And uh, follow me on academia.edu. Tell your friends about this. And I'll be chatting to you again, hopefully sometime soon. My name is John Gabriel, and this is New Calculus Channel. Till next time, goodbye.